Okay, I want to take a quick minute to go through just how to navigate through the lessons that you see below. So once you've logged into the Capstone Seminar course, you'll see this video that you're watching right now here in the middle, and underneath you will see a series of lessons. And you'll notice that these are the lessons, at least the ones that are there right now, that you we either have covered or will be covering or what I will expect you to cover as part of the class that we're having on the 18th and that or as follow-up work from the 18th. There will be things that will be added to the course uh, as time goes on, some of that by myself, some of that by other instructors. And I want to sort of take you through each of these lessons, or at least a sample lesson here, because I know they're formatted slightly different than much of your other Canvas courses. So when you click on an individual lesson, it begins with basically a little introduction up here. And this is usually two to five sentences that sort of give you an overview of the content that's going to be covered in the that particular lesson. Then there's a couple of objectives that are listed there and this is essentially what we're hoping that you would get out of the lesson. So um, if you haven't got this out of the lesson, if at the end of completing a lesson you don't feel like you are able to do that, that's when you want to go back, when we come back on the 18th or you want to follow up with me after the 18th to essentially remediate anything. So you'll see here as we pass that, uh, there is a reading section. There's usually required and supplemental. Um, they are exactly as described. So the required readings are things that I expect you to do. Uh, supplemental readings are things that I think are useful. They're there for you to use if you want. Uh, it all depends on how much time that you have, whether or not you actually go and read them. Um, or, again, if you feel like you don't understand these two objectives here, the supplemental readings may be that additional bit of information that would help you get over that. Um, each of the readings are presented with the, if it's an academic reading, the full APA citation. Um, and uh, if it's not, usually enough information to be able to tell you where it's coming from and who wrote it. Following that, you'll see the subpoint, and that's usually an advanced organizer. So it will give you some sense as to why I picked it and or why I selected it and in some cases specific instructions about how to read it. So if you look at this particular article, um, it tells you that the entire article can be skimmed with the exception of this one section. And so it's important to read these particular things because if I remember correctly, this article here, while it's a website, if you were to print it out, probably prints out to eight to 10 pages, but it, there's about two to two and a half pages that are actually really important that should be read carefully so that you can understand and it says specifically so you can understand complexity theory in relation to change theory so if you have read this section and you don't have some understanding of complexity theory in relation to change theory you want to reread that particular section the rest of it is really just there for um, context and because it's larger it's part of the larger article but as it says it can be skimmed and you'll see this kind of instruction in a lot of these readings where it tells you to skim something or skip something or it tells you to pay particular attention to a specific area and so use the, those instructions to expedite your own reading because you shouldn't have to go through all of these readings and read the entire content with the same level of understanding, uh, with the same depth um, that you would uh, as you're going through. So following the readings, there's the content, and that's where the meat of the article, or the meat of the lesson is. Now, each of these are designed as if we didn't have class. So typically speaking, you'll see there's a couple of sentences, usually anywhere from two to five sentences that sort of introduce um, some sort of video-based instruction. And then there's these video-based instructions um, you'll find that most of them 
tend to be less than 10 minutes. Actually, a lot of them tend to be less than five minutes in length. Um, I think I've timed out all of these lessons so that if you were to do the complete lesson, that it would take you less than a half hour per lesson, although many of these lessons aren't designed to be done from beginning to end. Uh, many of them we're actually going to be doing in class and they are there simply for a review purposes or for you to be able to go back and take a look at what we went over. Oftentimes following the video I will have a um, a uh, statement that you have here that sort of ties into the video. So um, because I'm, as you can see here in student view, the system doesn't pick up my Google account like it will pick up your Google account. But this here is a, uh, a presentation that Dr. Santiago has put into our Google folder. So it'll show up when you guys are in here. Um, in fact, if I were to leave student view right now, um, you would see that the presentation actually shows up here. So when you log into it, it'll show up like this simply because you're logged into your Google accounts the same way that uh, all of the other materials are presented. So back in student view here now, as you can see, again, you scroll down some more information about the videos the video itself and as you can see this one here is like seven minutes um, you know here's a, a visual that is actually what she's drawing on the board there and then there's some follow-up material here and this is actually the reference from the uh, introduction above so as you can see there's not a lot and this is about what you find in all of them and as I mentioned, a lot of these are going to be presented as review. For example, if you look at this lesson, Searching the Literature, what you'll find as you scroll through it, and it specifically says here in the introduction, note that this lesson is a summary or review of the material that I covered during the class of on the 27th of September. So this is a lesson that's in here that you don't have to complete at all. Now, I know for the... Um, the actual session on the 27th of September, I didn't get you to review this required reading. And if you've been having difficulty with identifying good literature that you can use, um, I would suggest basically looking at this. And you can see here, there's a specific section that I mentioned, this reviewing uh, review questions and identifying studies on pages 66 and 69 and even if you are having success with finding relevant literature for your uh, the topic that you are interested in I might look at those four pages anyway just to make sure but again this is the stuff we did so as you can see the first one talks about linking your Google Scholar to uh, your Toro University Library account, which is the first thing we did on the 27th. Then it goes through and talks about the different features in Google Scholar. And this is probably the longest video in the entire um, Canvas section that I've got set up here because it's about 17 minutes, but it essentially covers all of that. You know, here are all the individual pieces that we looked at. And then it ends with a little five minute video that provides an example of how to go about searching for things and then how to use what you found and the tools of Google Scholar to be able to uh, find things that may be more relevant. This is where it introduces you to and talks about the Boolean logic that we spoke about. So as you can see, this lesson here is an entire repeat of what we did in class. And a lot of these lessons, particularly in this literature review section, but also to a lesser extent in the research methodology section, these are things we're going to be covering when we meet on the 18th of October. Uh, so what we'll likely find in the instructions that I send out, um, I'll ask you to complete these first two lessons, but most of the stuff from this will essentially just be doing the readings beforehand, so that way you are coming to class on the 18th with a bit better background into some of the topics that we're going to be discussing.